Here I've got this nice inequality involving trigonometric functions that's over 2,000 years old. So it's attributed to Aristarchus. And like I said, it's from about the year 250 BCE. And so let's see what our goal is. We want to suppose that beta and alpha are less than pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. They're bigger than 0, and beta is less than alpha. Then the result is that sine of alpha over sine of beta is less than alpha over beta, which is less than tan alpha over tan beta. We're going to use the following fact, which is pretty easy to prove, and that is if theta is an acute angle, in other words, it's between 0 and pi over 2, or 0 and 90 degrees, if you'd rather that, then theta is less than the tangent of theta. So you can do that in a number of different ways. To be honest, I would probably prove this with calculus by showing that the function tan theta minus theta is always positive by taking its derivative or something and showing that it's always an increasing function and it starts off at some positive number. Okay, great. So let's maybe get into this. We're going to focus on this left-hand part of the inequality first, and then we'll prove the right-hand part of the inequality. So before we look at the proof of this left-hand inequality, I want to first transport it into something that's equivalent that's a little bit easier to prove. So let's notice that sine alpha over sine beta less than alpha over beta is equivalent to the inequality that I get by cross multiplying. So that would be beta times sine alpha is less than alpha times sine beta. So that's pretty clear just by cross multiplying. Next, I can subtract the same thing from both sides of this inequality and I have not changed its truth. So that means this is equivalent to the inequality that I get after subtracting beta sine beta. So that's what I'll do. So I've got beta sine alpha minus beta sine beta is less than alpha sine beta minus beta sine beta. So what did I do there? I just subtracted beta sine beta from both sides. Now I can factor out a greatest common factor from both sides. So the greatest common factor here is beta, and I'll have sine alpha minus sine beta. And then the greatest common factor here is sine beta. So I've got sine beta times alpha minus beta. Next, I'll kind of rewrite this so that I have like terms dividing each other. So by like terms, I mean this sine alpha minus sine beta and alpha minus beta. Those seem pretty similar. And then the same thing with sine beta and beta. So that means this is equivalent to, let's see the order I want to do, do it in. Sine alpha minus sine beta over alpha minus beta being less than sine beta over beta. So just to reiterate, what we've done is taken our goal inequality and said that our goal inequality, or at least the left-hand side of our goal inequality, is equivalent to the following inequality. Okay, so now let's get to proving this following inequality. And we're going to do it by starting with this left-hand side. So here I'll just put note that this sine of alpha minus sine of beta over alpha minus beta. Well, if we look at that geometrically, what's going on there? That is in fact the secant line, I should say the slope of the secant line between beta sine beta and alpha sine alpha, if that's happening like in the xy plane, right? So just to sketch it out here, so let's say we put pi over two right here, one, and so we know that the sine function starts out at zero and ends at one. So that would look a little something like this. And then we've got alpha bigger than beta. So we'll put like alpha right here, we'll put beta right here. So what we are calculating here is the secant line. So that would be like the slope of that orange line. 
let's recall that from calculus, and I know it's a little bit cheaty to use calculus here because this was developed way before calculus was invented, but you know, I, I'm gonna do it with calculus. That's just the situation. So by calculus, we know that this is equal to the tangent line for some value between beta and alpha. So the tangent line is given by the derivative with respect to x of sine of x evaluated at x equals gamma, where this gamma is on the open interval alpha to beta. So like I said, that's the mean value theorem. So slope of tangent line is equal to slope of secant line. So where is that gamma? Well, all that's guaranteed is that it's between alpha and beta. But in this particular setup, it looks like it might be right about here. So if we transpose that up, we see that the tangent line is approximately parallel to the secant line right there. Okay, but we know something about the derivative of sine, it's equal to cosine. Then we plug in gamma and we see that this is equal to the cosine of gamma. Okay. But then cosine is a decreasing function on the interval zero to pi over two. So let's just maybe sketch that out. If sine is this light green, then cosine is this darker green. So this is the graph of y equals cosine of x, whereas this guy right here, it's getting kind of messy, but that's okay, is y equals sine of x. So like I said, cosine is a decreasing function, but gamma is on the interval, I just realized this should have been switched, beta to alpha, which means cosine of gamma is less than cosine of beta. But now cosine of beta is equal to sine of beta over tangent of beta. So notice that like everything important cancels out. Tangent is sine over cosine, those sines cancel and the cosine flips up to the numerator. Now we can apply this fact. So we know theta is less than tangent theta, but that means one over theta is bigger than one over tangent theta. So we can put the appropriate inequality here and have sine of beta. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We started way over here, and we showed that that was less than sine beta over beta. But from this path of equivalent statements, we know that is equivalent to the inequality that we wanted, which was the left half of our goal inequality. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll look at the right half of our goal inequality. We just got finished showing the left half of our goal inequality, and that is that sine alpha over sine beta is less than alpha over beta. Now we're ready to show that alpha over beta is less than tan alpha over tan beta. And I've streamlined this part of the proof a little bit, but sometimes I think it's nice to see something that's super streamlined without a bunch of restarts and stuff like that after picking up certain facts. So let's start with the left-hand side of this inequality, alpha over beta. Then we're gonna do a classic trick, which is to add zero to the numerator. So I'm gonna add zero in the form of alpha minus beta plus beta over beta. So I think we can all agree that those are the same. But now I can pull these apart into two fractions. This is the same thing as alpha minus beta over beta plus the number one. Again, I think we can all agree that that is clear. Next, we wanna apply our fact. So alpha minus beta is less than tangent of alpha minus beta. And how do we know that? Well, if beta is less than alpha and they're both less than pi over two, then that implies that alpha minus beta is also less than pi over two. That's pretty easy to see. So that means we can replace this numerator with tan alpha minus beta. So we've got tan alpha minus beta over beta plus one in the next step like that. Okay. 
But now we can replace tangent of alpha minus beta with sine over cosine. So this is equal to sine alpha minus beta over cosine alpha minus beta times beta, which I'll put out front plus one. Next up, we will apply the difference angle formula to sine of alpha minus beta. Next up, we'll use the fact that cosine is a decreasing function to replace cosine of alpha minus beta with cosine of beta, and that will give us something bigger because we're decreasing the numerator, thus increasing the whole thing. So this is gonna be less than sine of alpha minus beta over beta cosine of alpha, like I just described. And then we need a plus one. And so notice that alpha minus beta is less than alpha, which means cosine of alpha is smaller, which means one over cosine of alpha is larger. So that puts the inequality in the right order. Okay, next we'll apply the difference formula for angles inside of sine. And that allows us to write this thing as sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta beta, and that's all over beta times cosine of alpha, and then we still have a plus one. Next up, we'll simplify these fractions as possible. So this sine alpha over cosine alpha will give us tangent alpha. So we've got tangent of alpha times cosine of beta all over beta minus, now let's see this cosine of alpha cancels, we've got sine of beta over beta plus one. So we're left with that spot. But now we know sine of beta over beta is bigger than one. So that's another fact that's pretty similar to this one. So if we're subtracting sine of beta over beta and adding one, well, we can remove all of that and we build something that is larger. So that means removing this, we get that all of this is less than tangent of alpha times cosine of beta over beta. But now we'll do the same sort of inequality again, but just a little different flavor. We'll replace this beta in the denominator with sine of beta. And so that will be replacing that beta with something that is smaller and thus making something bigger. So this is gonna be less than tangent of alpha times cosine of beta all over sine of beta. And just to reiterate, that's because beta is bigger than sine of beta. And this is actually true for anything on this interval, like as I just kind of hinted at. But now notice that that simplifies to exactly what we want, which is tangent of alpha over tangent of beta. So looking at the extreme right-hand side, one of the inequalities in the middle, in the extreme left-hand side, we see that we've arrived at the right half of this inequality. And that's a good place to stop.